Nachamol. Okay. Nachamol. Ich habe gesagt, ich bin sehr zufrieden. I'm very, very happy. As man hat alle Menschen du einzige Nacht. Everybody's here tonight. To read a poor word of Yiddish. Speak a few words of Yiddish. So, haben it's a hard na meister straight to hear it. Hello to F. Shah a little, maybe a little song. Who this is? Okay, whatever it will be, it will be. So, I hope everybody will will uh, enjoy themselves. Um, it's possible F. Shah. As my hub mentioned, was read Nasach Yiddish. Maybe we have people that speak a lot of Yiddish. Aber nicht kein viel Yiddish. Maybe not so much Yiddish. Uh, aber nicht kein Yiddish. Nobody speaks. You don't know any Yiddish. Whatever it is, tonight, there'll be something for everyone, I hope. Okay. So um, I, I will start by, by telling a little tale. You know, Yiddish has its its place, not only as a language, but it has nuances everywhere. And I'll tell this story. I was 12 years old, and I was in the car with my bubby, and my mother is driving, and I went into a sneezing fit. But I mean, I couldn't stop. And finally, my grandmother looks at my mother and says, Alan Hutton Hutter? My mother goes, Gefeld. And she says again, Alan Hutton Hutter? Gefeld. Alan Hutton Hutter? Gefeld. Drive up off Einstein, and they start going back and forth. And all of a sudden, the two fingers come up, poo, poo, poo. <laughs> and I would have said, Ma, what the hell is that? But a gang of kicking a patch and piss. It's the same off nerd, you know, my, my teeth would hit the ground. You don't speak to your parents like that. Turns out that they thought somebody might have given me the Kenahara, and they had to. They had to, to, to say it out. They so said, my grandmother looks at my mother and says, Alan has the Kinahara. My grandmother goes, Gefelt. It should fail. It should go away. And again, the second time, Alan Hutton the Gahara, Gefelt. Alan Hutton the Hara, Gefelt. Then they have to do this incantation. Drei Weiber auf ein Stein, three wives, three old wives on one stone. Ein sucked as a hut the Kinahara. The first one says he has the Kinahara. The under the zuk nein. The second one says no, he doesn't. The dritt is zuk. The third one says from Venice is gekimin zolus krit gain. From wherever it came from, it should go back. And then you have to finish it by spitting on your fingers three times. Poo poo poo. <laughs> if anybody else would have been in it, they would have thought we're all crazy. But these are some of the, the, the things that we remember from our Yiddish bringing up. And, and uh, I'm 12, I'm now 68. So 56 years later, this is sticking in my mind. I'm sure everybody here has a story or two similar, if not the same. Hepsha, maybe? Joe. Yes, Joe. Yeah. So, uh, you have a Bissell episode? Yeah, yes. Really? I think I we're not as super people. We can't, we can't hear, hear you, Joe. Hacka. Louder. Hacka. No, he's not on. But, no, he is on, but they're not really here. We need a 10 year old here to do this. So, so you do some <laughs> terrible story. Then. He's muted. He has to unmute. Are you muted? Unmute yourself. Well, MJ is sitting next to him. He's definitely muted. Yes. Alan, you have control. You could unmute him. I, I don't think so. I think Mike has, has control. control. That's by the way, ladies. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go ahead. You're on. Okay. The shame of MJ fixed. Okay, he got it. Hey, please. MJ at Gamach Bessa. Oh, there you go. Mein Bible hat gemacht besser. Uh. Okay, ich, ich will der sagen eine uh, uh, Geschichte, wenn ich bin gewesen. I'm going to tell you a story. Man, uh, Joe, you're good. Then, uh, <laughs> well, I, ich habe das uh, geschrieben. Uh. Ich kann das lesen ein bisschen. I wrote it down, so I, I try to get the words right. Uh, and give you the English translation as we go. So, ich wollte der Zugin ein bisschen 
von meiner uh, Jazde. I want to tell you a little bit about a trip. Was ich hab gemacht noch the heuche Schule graduation after high school graduation. What does I? So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Meine beste Freund und ich uh, beschlossen, we agreed uh, to uh, as a yazde uh, to uh, Mexico, uh, so we agreed that we would take a trip to Mexico. I gotta put on my glasses. Left out because it would be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good design. Madaf haben de glaze. So, Madgezut das Megait to Tijuana. We decided that Tijuana would be the place. So, in Tijuana, Mergevain in a Klein Krum. We, in Tijuana, we went into a little shop. And Motka handled mit the chrome bazit there. So we were handling, we were bartering with the, the owner of the little shop. And we, uh, we were bartering, handling, vegan the price for a sombrero on a beach. We're dis discussing and bartering over the price of a sombrero and a whip. Erez Gavain a groise man. He was a big man. Er hot getragen a weiße hemd. He was wearing a white shirt on weiße hoisen and white pants. Er hot gehat a Sag schwarze Hue, a soy the mic. Mit Größe, I have had Größe Tinkle Eugen, dark eyes, big uh, dark eyes, and mit a Größe Schwarze Wunzes, with a big black mustache. How do you say mustache? Wunzes. Vonses. Mustache or whiskers, same. I didn't know yeah, that. That's one. true. Thought, oh, Bunsen is bugs, right? Bunsen. Yeah, no, but 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 that's not what he said. Bunsen. Bunsen are our fleas. Our uh, <laughs> don't okay. get with it. The he had fleas in his in his mustache. What can they tell you? <laughs> There's a joke about that. Anyway, er zeit ois zeir Mexicana. He looked like a very Mexican person. Von hinter der Krom, from the back of the, of the little shop, hob ich gehört sein Weib rufen zu ihm. So from the back of the store, I heard his wife calling to him. In Yiddish, Euch Yiddish. Befreien sich von die Kinder, says Zeit for Mittag. And he said, Get rid of those kids, it's time for lunch. Ich hab sich aufgerufen. I responded to her in Yiddish, in Yiddish, und gefragt, was ist for Mittag? I asked her in Yiddish, what's for lunch? What's for lunch? Sie kommen Royce lachen. She came out from the back laughing. Und gesagt and said, sie gemacht Urgicken. Urgicken sandwiches. Cucumber sandwiches. I don't know. I can't say it. Gherkin. Gherkin. Ugerkin. Ugerkin. The cucumbers, Ugerkin sandwiches. Un mirzenen farbeten to mitak mitzai. And she invited us to stay for lunch. 
So, azoy my my friends. So my friends, Yiddish, Yiddish is given, and I hope that versteht versetzen sich as the universal Yiddish sprach. No. In other words, it still is. Yiddish no. is in, 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 in the Jewish language, and I hope will continue to be. As I communicated with my cousins in Israel, wherever you go, if you find a Jew, hopefully you can communicate in Yiddish. Surely, how about a joke? We have a story. We have a story that, that, that ties Al Davis to me. Surely, it's some in Yiddish, some in English. So anyway. Al, you probably don't remember this, but I'm going to remind you. You called yeah. me up many years ago before a convention, and you asked me, can, can I sing? I said, not very good. He says, are you a tenor? Are you a trainer? <laughs> I, I said, what? What is that? So he said, well, go ask your wife. She'll know what that means. But I said to Shirley, am I a trainer or a tenor? And she did, so she looks like she looks blank. So tell the rest of the story. So I get on the phone with Al and I said, Trennan to Trennan is to rip apart like a hem. Oh, and he says, God. Yes, you're right. But there's another meaning to that. <laughs> I said, I don't know it. I'm going to consult with my mother and we'll see what happens. So I call her, Mom. Uh, what's to Trennan? And she says, to rip apart, you know, like a ham. And I say, is there another meaning? And she goes, oi, sheerly, feh. Those <laughs> dirty Russian Jews, they say that for to rape someone. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I call yeah. Al back, and I said, the expert said, to rape, and he says she's pretty close. It means fuck you. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I call, I call my mother back and I say, Mom, the other meaning is fuck you. Oh, and she yeah. says, Oh, and hangs up. Before I can turn around, the phone rings again. Shirley, what's this fuck you? <laughs> <laughs> That has become a family lore. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Sh Shirley, just to set the record straight, a trainer is, if you're going to translate using, using the vulgar, it's a fucker, you know, somebody who, who's making sense. Oh, well, you were close. Right? I was but, close. But, but to, say, to say fuck you, it's a reflexive verb in, in Yiddish. You would say trendier. Trendier. Go fuck you. It's a like, trainer is, is one who's engaged in, in, the, in the act. Then oh, uh, okay. Go do it yourself. <laughs> so to keep going on with the men's club, uh, we all attended a men's club convention at the Concord. And the Concord was on its last two legs, you know. But one night we had a comedian who told all the jokes in Yiddish. And three of us were rolling on the floor while the rest of them were sitting, huh? Well, you know? <laughs> so this is the joke. And I'm going to uh, tell the joke in Yiddish, then I'll translate. So, I eat in a kimta on some shoichet, zidav koifuna hingel for Shabbos. I know this. <laughs> They chop the hingo and let the salon in the blue skin. They show it to the gazin durch the spiegel. And look to us, Ganefte, give me the rest of this hingo. Who's the rest? I don't know who's the rest. Give me this hingo. No, I can't get in, I can't get in. And they chop the blue skin and the breast fell to us. And they chop off the hand. Got a new show, no conflict. So a Jewish woman goes to the butcher. She doesn't see anyone. So she grabs a chicken and puts it in her box. The butcher 
saw her through the mirror and they're arguing back and forth and he grabs her blouse and a breast falls out <laughs> and he raises his arm. What, you plucked it already? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I told my father who just couldn't stop laughing and my mother go, feh, you know, so. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Who's got a story? Who would like to share? Uh, uh, I, well, I have a few stories. Go ahead, Reggie. But Lily, <laughs> Lily, Lily might relate to this. Um, we're both from Cincinnati. We're both friends for, for all our lives. And when our parents were becoming citizens, they had to go to the judge and they had their applications and they, you know, were new immigrants. They didn't know English very well. And when it came to sex, they put down three times a week instead of male <laughs> or female. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I, I don't know, they didn't understand, they didn't understand it. And then they, oh, I have another, but that's in English. And then um, years ago, we went on a cruise, one of the first cruises we went on, and we were in Colombia. And I'm going into a jewelry store, you know, I was looking for an emerald. So I go into this jewelry store and Gabby, my husband says, I think she speaks Yiddish. And so I look at her and, and he so that's Yiddish. Yeah, I heard that Yiddish. Die weiß was, ich will kaufen das. Wie viel is this? And she gave me the best deal I ever had. <laughs> so you never know where you're going to go and you're going to find a bargain and somebody who speaks Yiddish so you can handle with them. Very good. Well, no. Who else has a story? Somebody. Come on, uh, don't be shy. So, so I'll give you, I'll give you one. Stuff. I'll give you one Afidish and Nazekred. Okay? So let's start this way. On Mullah's Gavena College, college Bacha, once there was a college boy, and a Baba had gestorben. When it stayed, is Zerbatript. His grandmother passed away, she died. And his grandfather was very sad. The Bacha is a mensch. When there's a Zede, the boy is a good guy, he's a mensch, and he says to his grandfather, Come join with me to Bam Come live with me for a few days at the college, and you wouldn't be alone. No, come to Zede, when next to Tug, the next day, the, the grandfather came, they went to a lecture. By the Kayan Gadol from the professors, they, after Hyena was locked. So they went to see this high ranking professor like the Kayan Gadol, and he's going to give us a, a, a lecture on the laughing hyena. In a Dauphin Vitsin, you need to know, as the Zeta for Stateness does a good English, he doesn't really understand English well. Oh, and yeah, and also, it cannot help as I get. He doesn't hear so well either. So, Azai, when the professor had gazook laughing hyena, so when the professor said laughing hyena, the Zayda had gefragt was, the grandfather says, what? Okay. On for the bacha, the boy answers, a chaya was lacht, an animal that laughs. Azai zayda. So, like this, Zayda says, er zazak, and he doesn't know about such things. Später, later, look the professor, the professor says, the laughing hyena urinate only once a week. And the old man says, was? Was sagt der Frank Zeta? What? What did he say, Grandpa? Yes. Er hat gesagt, as the chaya was lacht, pischereis nur in malavacht. He said, the animal that laughs only urinates once a week. A zoi sagt Like that, Grandpa shouted. Also, the professor knows the laughing hyena defecates but once a month. Was? Was what the Frank say? What? What did the grandpa say? And the boy answers, Er hat gesagt, the chaya was lach, kaksechus noron molachaid. The laughing animal only uh, relieves himself once a month. Az zay shrek say the nachamo. Grandpa yells again. Wow, like that. And then the professor says, it's perhaps most interesting to note that the laughing hyena has sexual relations 
only once per year. Nachamol the altar zvosok there. And once again, the old man says, "What did he say?" And the boy says, "Erzok as the chayav aslach trent nur ein malayor." And we now know what trent means. He said the animal that laughs engages in sexual relations only one time a year. No, the zeid the trach the bissel when zrok shara enakol. The grandfather thinks for a minute and says to his grandson. As the chayav was locked, pish sechais nor ein olavach. If the laughing animal only pees once a month, unkat sechais nor ein mola chaydes, and he goes uh, number two only once a month, on a trend nor ein mola year, and he only has sex once a year. Fav was locked. Are you laughing? That's good. That's good. Fav was locked. Who else has a story? David, you should tell your story. Uh, what's the one about the joke about the uh, Yiddish couple that came to America? They did well. And they joined a country club. And they would go. They had the fixed fee. They paid for it. So they would go to have dinner. And um, the Vav, she didn't like to drink. She wasn't a schnapser. And, they, you know, they never ordered drinks. And people all around them ordered drinks. So one time they were getting ready to go, and her husband says that we're going. This time we're going to order a drink. Promise me we'll order a drink. I pay for it already. We're going to order a drink. So they get there, and the waiter comes up, and he says, will you like drinks, Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz? And she goes, she's going to want a drink. And she looks at him, and she goes, hey. She says, what should I get? And the waiter says, well, a lot of people right here are drinking martinis. Oh, okay, I'll take a martini. And he, he, the waiter says to her, wet or dry? And she says, eins is a good nick. Not too dirty. It's, the dirty. No, it's not the dirtiest one I have, but it's the dirtiest one I'm going to tell. <laughs> okay. well, very, very. You never heard that one? Come on, Barry. You must have one. Uh, I, I, I do. I, not in Yiddish, unfortunately, but uh, the, the Bubba walks on the beach with uh, with a little uh, grandson, Lichila, and I'm walking along, and a big wave comes. <laughs> away into the water and he's gone and she starts screaming uh, the booby starts screaming god god save my grandson my grandson bring him back to me please god and with that a huge wave comes back motion riding on the top and to the, the feet of, of the buddha and the buddha says oh god thank you so much you saved my son my grandson thank you lord but lord Where's his hat? <laughs> Where's his hat? See, I, I heard the same story, with the, but the bubby had a little attitude. She looks up to the heavens and she says, he had a hat. <laughs> right. Let me say um, something. Anita's mother, Olive Shalom, who passed away in March 90, 96 years old. 96. What I loved about, Hara. yeah, and she was a survivor and, and she was classic oh. Rose Goldberg. And she had some beautiful proverbs, Yiddish proverbs, and I'd like to hear others. I'll give you a few of hers. Oh, uh, you want to go? I'm gonna let her talk. The talk to Vil Sredin. Abyssal. Asma bis bazibn, bis de bazibatik. Okay. The way you are at seven is the way you are at seventy. That's right. True. I love that. One. <laughs> and then, um, let's see. I, I had to do something. I had to give a speech one time, and I wanted to start my speech in Yiddish. And my speech was about being in the business of tikkun olam, but it was a story about my family. Okay, and I started it with "Sezer Shver Tzayin Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I told the story, and I ended with "Asmavil Kenmer Iberker and the Ganze Welt." Yeah. We're there now. We need the Ibercare in our Gansa belt. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this belt is Michigan. We're, we're, we're translating. <laughs> okay. So okay. if you want, you can turn over the whole world. And I think right now we're in that kind of position where we need yes. to think about turning over the whole world. Yeah. And similarly, her mother would say, Menems vs. McKimmon. 
daf menens vos mekimen. You got to take what comes your way. And maybe that's not, I didn't do well. Somebody can say it better. Have you heard? And then she used to also like to say, this is Gavain is Gavain to Nishdu. Yeah. That's a good one. That's that was know? a song, too. There's yeah. a song that this is Gavain is Gavain to Well, she loved Yiddish songs, but I'm doing badly tonight with telling stories because the story I want to tell is not appropriate. So, <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, Anita, 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 it's appropriate. What? You heard what Is that an El Dimension do? McKenzie's looking yeah, for we're, we're sure. to oh, I can't seven. do it in Yiddish, is the hard part. Okay, so my mother comes to America on the ship, and we don't think about the questions we didn't ask about that time, but she meets David, and he said, so what did you think when you, you got off of the ship and you came to America? No. Did you see different people? And she said, yes, I saw black people for the first time in my life, and I was afraid I was going to have a black baby. <laughs> I'm telling the story. It's true. That's what she told us. And, um, you know, I have no clue why, but that's what she <laughs> well, thought. You know, our parents okay. were from Eastern Europe. They, you know, they. they she a, survived the Holocaust. Know. She didn't know. You know, that's what she saw. Yeah. She didn't know. Right. She expected okay. life to be very I, different. I, I, I know. So, so I got to tell you what. So, my grandfather was like the first to come over before World War One, and he brought over all sorts of people. You know, he had people in Israel. He brought people to the United States, and some of them they smuggled it in coal bunkers. Some came in through cannon. Uh, we don't know who was came in legal or not. Anyway, one of his, I guess it was a brother of my grandmother came in and he got off, I think he was at a coal bunker. He got off the ship and he was so happy to see it. And my grandmother said, I've got some fruit for you. So she gave him a banana and he looks at this banana and he said, oh, yeah. well, he kills the banana and he throws the pit, pit away. <laughs> 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 Well, he started eating the peel. As my face nished, my face nished. Yeah. How about some curses? Uh, I, I, ha I have a good one about a curse. Um, I was in Israel and I went to a friend's parents' house and they were much older and we're sitting at a table and I'm saying, yeah, I know Yiddish, you know, from my parents. And I, you know, said a few words. And then I said to them, this whole group of people, they must have been at the time in their 80s. And I said, yeah, Pierre Dolomenish and Koparan. And they look at me in silence. And I, I go, well, Is I said, just... don't mess with my head. And they go, no, no, that's not what you said. I go, well, what did I say? I didn't realize that my mother, and I don't know if your parents did it too, they mix Polish in with the German. And it literally, she literally said, don't fuck with my head. I grew up with that, not knowing that it was don't fuck with my head. I thought it was don't mess with my head. I went to my mother's grave and I said, mommy, shame on you. All these years you were saying that word and I had no idea. So I don't know if you grew up with a little bit of Polish mixed in with the Yiddish, thinking the word was Yiddish when it was actually Polish. Impossible. The Polish in my family was uh, spoken when we weren't supposed to understand. Mine too. Mine. Yeah. That's but, where I uh, learned Yiddish. <laughs> my, Mine too. My parents, That's why I thought I, it was Yiddish. I thought Yiddish was when, I, when they were talking to something that my sister and I weren't supposed to know about. So they spoke Yiddish because I didn't speak Yiddish. I my never father, heard. My father would be telling a dirty story with his friends, and he'd see me standing there and say, Gay of Ekman's looking Kaddish, though. Don't <laughs> worry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hear Kaddish. My sister is on this, uh, on this uh, Zoom also, and she could tell you when we'd come home and Bubby was in the house baking, you'd hear her, you know, we'd be coming down the hallway, and she'd give a geschrei to my mother. Gittel, schnell, behold, is Issa, kim to kinder. Like, we couldn't smell it all the way down the hallway. We knew Bubby was baking. You could say, hide the sweets, the kids are coming. But my sister and I knew Bubby had baked. <laughs> and we wanted to know where it was. <laughs> Sometimes you mix up the Yiddish, you know, because... I remember I grew up with Yiddish and I thought I knew it all, of course. So when Mike and I came back from our honeymoon, 
uh, our parents' uh, friend asked us, uh, be gay, this, be gay, you know, and I said, oh, me macht, me macht, we're doing, okay. I'm saying we're doing okay, but of course I was saying we're having sex all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was so <laughs> mad at me. Is it true? Is that the truth? Yes. 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 See, my, my, my parents never, I never heard them swear in yeah, Yiddish. Right. However, they had some wonderful... Uh, Polish. Well, not, I, in Polish was different. But, you know, they would, they would say things like if they didn't, a curse. Like if, if, if uh, somebody really did them yeah. wrong, the best one I liked was Zos Vaxen Viat Sibylle. In the Fisa Rosh. The Fisa Rinta. <laughs> which means you should grow like an onion with your head in the ground, your feet in the air. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was beautiful. <laughs> and yes, and the other one. Zos Vaxen Sibylle and Bach. And the other one. What is that? Chandelier. We grew up with so much Yiddish in our house because my grandparents lived with us that I wasn't sure if I was speaking English or Yiddish. Like for years, I thought the word aggravate was Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> Except it came out more like aggravate. I have a joke. I have, I have a joke. I'm not sure if my Yiddish is going to be very good, but I'll, I could try. So. Does everybody know how to say the word Indian in Yiddish? Indian. Indian. It's Indian. So Indian. Indian. And kig fin buflox. Buflox is buffalo. Right? So, and hutnish kin vasa, and hutnish sunnish to essen. And Lessa finally as as a uh, buflax. Gib a chapen in his zecho and a gib a gasrai oy ve mina mazel is a milk dick at tomahawk. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> that's cute. You did all right. It's a cotton note. That's cute. That's cute. I never heard that one. That's good. I I, t I tell that story with a, it's much much longer. The whole <laughs> what we call a geschichte, a whole story. Uh, yes, a long geschichte. So uh, there's something about with the Indiana on the same theme. This Jewish boy brings uh, an Indian girl home to his mother. And he says, mother, I'm going to marry this beautiful girl. Her name is uh, Flowering Blossom by the Lake. And the mother turns to him and she says, well, I have a new name too, Sitting Shiva. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where's Esther? Esther, are you there? Esther, you must have something. Yeah, she's gone. So. We can't hear you. I think she's muted. She has to, she has to no, unmute herself. Oh, Michael, unmute her. She's not muted. She's got to mute her. She's, yeah. Are you? Okay. I don't see her as being muted. I see David Beckman's yeah. daughter when David Beckman is on there. So Esther okay. is there. He's yeah, she's muted. muted. You're mm -hmm. muted. Unmute yourself. Put the pointer in the corner of your picture. There's a blue box and tap on that and it'll say, it'll give you permission to unmute. More people here. There was a, a gentleman. Yeah, in basement, there's a, there's a head. How about Sylvia? Sylvia Nissen, you have a story? Where is Hashel? Sylvia's muted what? too. Why don't we ask them if they have a story? They've been listening all this time. Sylvia's muted. Yeah. Can you do it? Come yeah. up with a Yiddish oh, yeah. version of Zoom that lets everybody talk at the same time. <laughs> so we had uh, back in the day, the old days in Charleston, the uh, main street is called King Street, the main business district. 
And there were, uh, I would say, 75 to 80 percent were independently owned Yiddish businesses, jewelry store, clothing stores, furniture stores. And one uh, a little, uh, sort of a discount shoe store was owned by Max Sun and Shine. And Max was uh, his son, Irving. It, this is going back. I, I grew up with Max's grandsons. And, but he was quite, he was very glib with his Yiddish, Max Sun and Shine. And so if you weren't busy in your store, you went to visit a friend in another store. And the line to Max Sunshine, so friend went to see Max in his store and said, Max, new so, so did you make any money today? He said, ich ka English ganze tuk. I always thought that was cute. That is funny. <laughs> That's good. Medafi McCadden. We have to translate for the people who don't speak. Oh, he said, oh, I'm sorry. He said, I haven't spoken a word of English all day. That's how slow <laughs> business is. That means he <laughs> <didn't do> that. <laughs> and done anything all day. That's a good one. That's right. That's right. I have another story for you people. So Queen Elizabeth heard rumors that Parliament was planning to tax the royal family on the same basis as private individuals, and she needed a good tax advisor. Okay, she asked several, billion, several billionaires in England, and every one of them would print a call Max Pincus, call Max Pincus. So she turned, to Brit she turned to British intelligence to locate the guy. And a report came back that says Max is living in Brooklyn, New York, making his living betting on horses. The report also noted that Max was making huge fees as an unregistered tax advisor. And as a heavy contributor to both parties, he got IRS immunity. So they made arrangements to get Max to London and to meet with the Queen secretly. But Max insisted that her husband and the accountants had to attend. At the palace, Max poured over the Queen's complicated financial reports, and given her extensive wealth, Max read every single paper. After several days of reading and questioning, he met with the Queen, with Prince Philip, and with two chartered accountants. Feist, says Max, because I got a Brooklyn accent, I'll speak slowly. Also, some voids are better zoomed in Yiddish, better said in Yiddish. If I use any, you'll ask me for a translation but it wouldn't be as good. Queenie, you should stoop some, some guilt into the trust fund for the eight o'clock. You should put money in the trust fund for the grandkids. Forever you ain't gonna live, and the inheritance taxes will fresh your estates via chaza. They'll eat up your, your assets like a pig. Next, you should write out of your will that Schmageggy, which would be a fool, idiot, schmuck. Okay, your son Charles. <laughs> He has enough of a state to feed the wine marina he married, and he ain't going to have no more kid luck. He's not going to have any more kids. Then you should chuckle dein tuchus, shake your behind, and quickly set up a couple of trusts for any tzedakas, any charities you want to help. But before Max could continue, Philip interrupted. I say, I would prefer it if you would speak English. And I must insist on more respect when addressing Her Majesty. So Queen Elizabeth turns to the prince and with a withering glance said, Philip, Timea Toiva, Gnuk, Narishkeit, and what is the biggest thread? I had a circle, I had a home, so decken me a tuchus. He starts speaking Yiddish and she says to him, Do me a favor, enough with your foolishness, and let Mr. Pinker speak. Really, he has the common sense I need to really cover my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Sylvia, Sylvia, can you hear? Can you hear us? Yes, yeah. I hear you now. Oh, good, good. Go ahead, Sylvia. Okay, Harold, you want to ask first? This is Harold. Hi, Harold. Hi, Chris Herschel. I want to take it And I understand her very well. Uh, the only thing I know is that my parents, I thought they spoke Yiddish at home, but I think they spoke German. Because when I was in Russia, I started to speak what I thought was Yiddish. And they told me uh, I thought it was German. And they told me that wasn't German. And they said, and one guy said, that isn't Yiddish either. 
I don't know where it came from. Uh, the one thing. What? The one thing. Uh, the, the Jewish people don't have a word for disappointed, and Alan and I have a disagreement on that. He uses. It, by the way, I checked with somebody else here, and he said that's not a good uh, example. Alan, tell the word that you wanted to use. Okay, the word is entice. Entice, you see? Entice, which means either... What is it? Entice. Depending on how you use it in context. And I, I went to a Yiddish dictionary and I sent it to Hazel as written proof that it's correct. Entice. Entice. Yep. But just but spell, it. spell that. But Jews are never disappointed. If if I would just spell it in the Yiddish or in the English, <laughs> either way. Entice. Um, let, wait a minute. I can I can find the actual Yiddish spelling if you yeah. give me a minute. In English, it's it would be a y n t o y s h t. Entice. And it means. Been as disappointed. Disappointed. Interesting. I never okay, heard well, that. Ever say that to well, while while yeah. we're going. While we're going to that, um, there's a story that goes with that. In that um, these two kids are speaking at college, and that's the actual thing that comes up, is they don't, uh, one says to the other, there's no such word for, for, uh, for disappointed in Yiddish. And the kid says, there has to be. You know what? I'll call my bubby. My bubby will know that. My bubby will know it. Okay, now I'm getting here. It is okay. So you got, it, you got to do it slow. Let me spell it in Yiddish. It's Aleph Nun Tov Vav Yud Shin Tet. Aleph Nun Tet Vav Yud Shin Tet. Untouched. Okay. The story goes that he calls up the grand and he says, "Bobby, what would you say?" if I said I was bringing a friend with me and we're coming to you for Shabbos dinner. And the Bobby says, I've been Yachtsefrieden, I'm so happy. I. And then he says, but Bobby, what if last minute something happened and I couldn't come and I called you up, I said, sorry, we can't make it. She said, he says, what would you say? She says, I been disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> really disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed in English. You know, I'm really also disappointed. <laughs> so, so we're, we're, right, getting, we're, getting, we're getting close to nine o'clock. So we're going to need to wrap the clock in Chicago. I, I apologize for the technical difficulties that we had. We had a lot of people sign up, and I got a lot of text during this that yeah. somehow the meeting on the 22nd somehow became today's meeting and so people just couldn't get on. Um, what, what I was going to poll the group for was, was to find out if you guys would be interested in continuing to have periodic gets together, practice your Yiddish or learn your Yiddish. So let, let me just kind of throw it out to the floor. Would you like to, would you like to get together? It would obviously be a bigger group because there were a lot more people that were going to join us. Would you like to? I'd be disappointed if we didn't do it. Parvusnish. Raise your hand if you'd like to continue to do this. I could try something. Try something. We have another one on the twenty-second, right? Raise your hand. Yeah, it's on the twenty-second, right? I'm going to find out. I'm going to make sure that our technical difficulties. You know, whatever they were, they won't happen again. Um, Mike, call your grandchild and have him set it up for you so there's no, not a no, problem. No, the, the problem wasn't my grandchild, I think. <laughs> the, the, the pro I think the problem was is that somebody switched the wires behind the, the scenes and took today's meeting and made it the meeting on the 22nd because that's apparently what, what happened to somebody. It didn't take the lead. So we'll, we'll okay. get that all fixed <laughs> next time. But we'll get together on the 22nd. Good. What I'd like to do is for homework, everybody come with one really, really good story and one really, really good expression. And what we're going to do the next time is find out if there's some people that would like to learn Yiddish and maybe we'll have a second group and, and to learn Yiddish like me and, and another group to practice their Yiddish. But and some I, just to laugh. And some it's just okay. to laugh. So, so we're, we're, 
Grayson Dunn. Efsha, Efsha, next in Mull, McKenzie and Abyssal. I've been prepitching, Brent of Fire. Hey, Mike, <laughs> we need to practice our banjos for this. <laughs> yeah. I can bring my accordion. Joe, you were going to have a song, weren't you? I, I've got my banjo, and we can we can play a little. Uh, about, hey, Joe, how about you and me practice something for next time? We could, we could we could do Kletzmer banjos. Okay, we'll do that. Excellent, Jim. Accordion. Yeah. All right. Let's That's try. It's nine o'clock. We can get on. Yes. We need a link. And if you could send us the link. We'll we'll, yes. we'll, we'll we'll figure out what happened and make sure it doesn't happen the next and time. And you send the links to other people. Who Invite you others, yeah, yeah, because that's what happened. We invited about 15 people, and there were like yeah, over 30 that signed up. So. And that just, uh, right, could have been Look good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Al. Good night. Stop the recording. Did you say guys that guy is that side is it?